Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Overwatch Atlantic Showdown. It is North America's turn yeah. to finally get themselves four teams qualified. I'm joined by Jason Kaplan for this one. I am not the Jeff Kaplan. Smith. Not Jeff not Kaplan. Not Jeff Kaplan. Yeah, he hasn't just come back from writing patch notes. Don't worry, I'm guys. I'm not his brother. I'm not his son. I'm not his cousin. I'm not his dad. He's not my grandfather. No, not him. No. Just coincidence. Just, just coincidence. Just happened to be another Kaplan yep. Yep. in the world. Plenty of you. Uh, you're not the... Call of Duty player either, by the way. We've got to get We're the same nose, but no. No, no, no. We're not. <laughs> J-Cap. Yeah, well, you mean you're both J-Caps. All of the J-Caps. See, they're all great what? at their jobs. There you go. See, I just gave them a compliment. How not going to work. How did that work? It's like How you said, North America qualifiers, the first one of its like. There's going to be four more or three more coming after this yep. throughout the entirety of July. Oh, of course, on Wednesdays and Thursdays, with day one being the initial start of the tournament, and then the second day being all of the quarterfinals to determine which four teams will be moving through into our regional finals to find the top four teams for the Gamescom event. Absolutely. We had uh, the European qualifiers yesterday, the final uh, yeah. first four teams going through. It was uh, Misfits went through. SG1. I'm going to have to quickly look across. SG1, Anox, yep. and of course, Reunited at the end yep. of the day. They're the first four for Europe. Playoffs are going to be happening at the end of August. But to get there, we need another 12 European teams and a 16 North American teams. It's going to be a big double elimination tournament at the end of the day. But we've got to start things off first. And where are we going to start? It's going to be Zenith Black up against Elevate. Mm -hmm. um, it is a round 128 game, so we never expect too high a skill matchup from this one. Obviously, the big seeds get themselves buys yep. generally as they get through this stage. Uh, the winner will be going against Luminosity, and we're going to be keeping, keeping with this side of the bracket first off. Yeah, it should be exciting. I mean, I think all the, the top four, the big four teams in North America have signed up. Curious to see what teams will, I mean, they're probably most likely going to get through for this one, but everyone else does have multiple chances. If you do lose here, you get to play next week on Wednesday, but I think our game is actually ready to go. They're dropping in. It's going to be a best of three starting off on King's Row, and we'll see how things go here. Yes, yeah, so apologies for the uh, small delay at the start, guys. We were just waiting for the teams to get all six players in there. We wanted to make sure yeah. everything was ready to go. They were confirming settings etc uh, so if you don't know what the format's going to be it's going to be best of three to start with best of five will be happening tomorrow when we get the quarterfinals mm. and of course it will be uh starting out gibraltar uh king's row gibraltar no, no. gibraltar's tomorrow no it's king's row oh yeah, yeah it say. is king's yeah. row yeah. Talking about yeah no yeah tomorrow will be king gibraltar but uh starting off king's row in the round 128 which is the one you need to worry about obviously then the loser of the map. If they don't complete the map, they will lose it. Obviously, if both teams don't, etc. You know you know how it works. You've all played competitive by now. You've had a week to get yourself your placement matches. You've all probably complained about your ELO, thinking, I'm much better than this. I know everybody has. Everybody has. I'm just, I'm just happy I got placed where one of the, where one of the pro players got placed, and yeah. I get to make fun of him for it. Is that because you queued with him? No. <laughs> you no, no, dragged no. him down. No, no, no. <laughs> No, Don't that'd be great. leave me! Um, but I think it's about to start. I think we should drop in here to yeah, things, get see in how now. things kick off. It's going to be Elevate over on the blue side defending, and Zenith Black uh, attacking here on this red side. So the lineups for you guys at home who might not know these teams for Elevate, we have uh, Connolly, Vile, uh, Winter, Wizix, Lavic, and the Balky. Are they the right way rounds? Yep. Definitely. Yep. Who ask me? Certain. The Brits yep. have their heads on straight. Oh, right. Yep. Definitely. Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. I just, <laughs> oh, you know, we were, it's because they were both waiting for their sixth. I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure the other side was. There we go. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be Soldier 76 up on high. Standard setup here. Expecting this so they make sure they don't get sniped off early on. They don't show, give themselves the vision. We are going to have, of course, a big Reinhardt shield at the front. It's going to be a standard Mercy. Torbjorn will be in there. Let's see where he's got that turret set up just around the corner. Lavex going to be on far up. Brilliant far out action yesterday. And Roadhog, who's almost become a staple diet in just about every setup lately in the, uh, the current meta. Yeah, so Baki, he's looking to actually get a pull, a hook through the shield and get someone on site for an easy kill. Maybe try to stop that Winston from jumping towards the back line. But he's been able to get straight on top of that turret. He might pay the price for this one. Uh, Zelfos does get really low on the HP, but he's able to back away and stay alive for now. And two quick kills, at least onto the turrets, coming in for Zenith. Oh, he's caught the Lucio. That's going to be quick and easy support taken down, and that should give them a good defense here. Let's spin across over to Farah. Where's Farah going to be? Just getting up on high around the backside of him. Zai is going to be taking that punishment down. No shield on herself, so she's taking straight direct damage here. We'll finally get the shield down, but it's just blasted away from the point. Not a single marker loss there for Elevate. Zenith Black attack. It was looking pretty good. They had the right setup. You know, they came around the statue. They had the right uh, idea. Just poorly executed. And now, and most importantly for Elevate, Wizzik's been able to pick up a lot of scrap here. Uh, Elmo Conley already has armor built up now. 
Stowing to put it over onto Winter, who's going to be the key target you have to watch in this fight. He needs to stay alive because they're going to start to push in and most importantly with some ultimates. But that's going to be a big kill. That's now a Reaper now done. On the X is going to be fallen. And Rube is going to be looking charging straight through with the tactical visor. But he's focused on a road hug. It takes forever for him to actually pick up the kill. And now somehow Wizzik is able to stay alive on the point for a split second. Yeah, they managed to get him down. They took Farah down early on, but as you heard, the big Resurrect come in there. Let's spin across the Lavex because he has got Barrage available. Doesn't need it. The rest of his team have done the job. There's the Resurrect, the Counterer. Now he's in a perfect opportunity here. Wants to deal with Iron Man there to begin with the Mercy. And then he can just pop his ulti from up on high. But I think his team have already given it the all clear. Don't worry. Don't need to use that big ulti. Keep it safe. We have the point covered off. Yeah, strong start here for Elevate. They're doing a great job of actually holding and defending. Wizzik switched away from his Torbjorn over to a Tracer to actually get back onto the point because they were not 100% sure that they knew they could hold it. But once they did figure it out, they did maintain uh, those ultimates online. Bach is going to follow this one, go for the chase. But he'll be able to get back in time because they still have Vile Virtues with that shield up to protect the rest of his team. But Wizix, surprised to see him actually still committing hmm. towards this Tracer. But you see when the Winston jumps in, it leaves their back line really vulnerable. So he's looking for Iron Arm to take him down before he has any sort of rest. Surprised to see no Farah on the attack as well. They haven't chosen to switch across to it. There's the Earth Chatter coming in. So Soldier 76 had his tactical visor running, but made no use of it there. Getting slammed out by that Reinhardt ultimate. Gambit's trying to work them down at the moment. Did just come in last minute substitute for the team. Let's see if he can work his magic here with the Zaya. Doesn't seem like it's going to be. Lavak gets himself a triple with the barrage, and they do not cap out the point. But they have got this Zerg mentality coming in now, so they may be able to get it. Where is the Mercy? There's the big revive I was waiting for. They get themselves up. Ulti is about ready for Connolly, and he can just pop them off. Doesn't even want to use it. I think he's going to hold it until the next wave. Yeah, I mean, we need to see someone contesting. You pointed this out before. Maybe a fair pick up for Zenith Black. He needs someone to contest Lavic in the air. He's just getting so much free reign. He's been able to pick off Iron Arm so many times now. Mm -hmm. And with Conley just sitting behind his Reinhardt, uh, behind Val Virtue, just to get some free damage in, it's really tough for Zenith to deal with this. So maybe switch over this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Oniax switching away from the Reaper over to McCree. But you have to wonder, is this a little bit too late? There's only 18 seconds left on the board. Yeah, they only got the one marker on the point to capture to begin with. They do get some tags onto the far of there, Lavic, but he's got his ultimate almost available, and Onyx, he can't just go straight up and face check against the far. He will absolutely smash you down. Three seconds to go, they have get to get on the point. point. They've got to move, nobody on point at the moment, and that's tragic. They just sat and backed away, got caught out, and they couldn't even cap out the first section. So, Elevate hold solidly there. Just a small blip but only lost the single marker. So they've got to be pretty confident here. Well, what kind of upsets a... me, though, is that they didn't try to get on the point to even throw it into overtime. Uh, they were still fighting over towards the right side, trying to force out Lavic, pick up a kill onto him. But now we're seeing Rube switch over to Farah here. So we're finally going to see uh, Zenith Black actually contest him in the air, ideally on their side. They also do have Oniax going to be playing the Junkrat. And Fancy Patsu, uh, Patsu switching over to the Symmetra to, to allow that, uh, that respawn mechanic with the teleporter. But... We did see Elevate switch our sit, which just basically one support the entire time on defense, and we're more than comfortable with it. They held the first point, and Azir Pot, our Black, need to do the same. Yeah, default strategy indeed worked out well. Fancy Pants, as you mentioned, going to try and get that teleport up. We'll see whether he has time to or not. I've got a feeling Elevate are going to have a pretty fearsome attack here. We'll see whether they can hold off. Connolly has switched across to the Reaper on attack, and uh, wish. Going on to the Lucio, was on Torbjorn, wasn't he, for a while, and then Tracer, etc., etc. <laughs> so there's the turrets going out from Fancy Pants, just simply doing the uh, standard triple either side. Well, so they didn't Lucium speed him out either, which kind of mm. confused me. He's not going to have his six turrets down in time. Um, yeah, I think just like a little bit of a difference in skill level between the two teams, I think you're seeing. Uh, I think Onyx. Well, not sure what I want to say he didn't want to go in the window. No, he did want to go in the window. <laughs> he, he just did, missed he it. Did. So that's. Uh, He's like, yeah, they've seen me go in here now. Yeah, that's, that's the moment you hope. The casters aren't watching you, but we are. We're watching everything here. Uh, Gambit's going to be playing the Roadhog behind Zelophos on the Reinhardt. So again, if they can get a nice pull in, if, uh, if Val Virtues puts a shield down at the wrong time, they can get you know a decent hole off the back of that in terms of having a man advantage. The real question is, can they convert that into a full wipe? Well, you're going to realize that Sentry Turrets are just around the side. Imm immediately get blasted away. Just gets himself launched in around there. Wants to deal with the junk rat. Symmetra Turrets slowing him down. But he's going to find himself the heal around the corner. Easy done for him. Let's keep up across the wards. 
the Reaper, Conley. Just wave forming. Is he going to teleport himself across the side? He is, gets himself to safety. He's going to be joining Lavix. Won't be able to deal with his junk wrap, and he's going to launch himself away. Every time I try and find action, I don't find it. Let's switch across to Lavak. He's the one going aggressive. Porky gets in. This is going to be an easy attack. They've cleared out almost all of the site. Just this single Farah and Mercy to deal with. But the thing is, Mercy, 91% got took down. Didn't have that Resurrect available. And that will be the point going across. Point they the didn't map. get the teleport down. Look at Fancy Pants, 100%. Didn't get. Didn't manage to place it. Yeah, it's just point on the map too, as long as they capture. I think even Rube. GG. Yeah, saying GG realizing that they lost out this first map. But luckily for them, they're going to be able to pick the second map. And the way the maps do work, besides the loser picking the map, is that we have a pool of six maps for each week. Those are chosen uh, ahead of time. They're predetermined. And for this week, it's going to be Dorado, Hollywood, Hanamura, Nepal, Kings Row, and Gibraltar. So they get to choose one of those five remaining maps to be played on in the next round. So what are we going to go with? I wonder, will it be another payload? Will they go to a hybrid, a King of the Hill style map? I think they got to throw something. Nepal in there, maybe. I don't know. Well, remember, it's just a best of three. So if we do go to another payload map and they get held completely, maybe you can you pretty much just kiss, it, uh, kiss the game goodbye for See, them. So the best way you I would say King, uh, King of the Hill. I'd say go Nepal. See, for me, you, you, you say that, but they've, they've played it. Uh, best thing for me would be go Hanamura because these these teams that have been playing, obviously, just for a long time throughout beta, etc., generally didn't go near them. So, okay, you're going to be on fairly even ground. Sure, they're probably maybe higher skill players, yeah. but if you can get your teamwork right, you might be able to slip through and get a quicker time. See, that's that's kind of why I feel like King of the Hill uh, could be an option, just for the fact it's TDM, more or more TDM-like, uh, and we've seen that Elevate can put up a, a good defense. Um... Did not realize it's it's best of three. I think they're being reinvited, realizing oh <laughs> Yeah, they were all going. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, I was thinking, yeah, maybe some King of the Hill because it's more TDM style. You can just work on, on trying to frag each other instead of working around, you know, synergy and necessarily compositions. But uh, they'll be coming back in when we get the next game up in just a few seconds. But guys, remember you can participate in these uh, in these qualifiers as well. It's all leading up to the hundred thousand dollar Gamescom tournament in the middle the twenty twenty first of August over here in Germany, uh, in Cologne, Germany. Just go to play.eslgaming.com and navigate your way or hit exclamation point brackets so you can navigate from there and you can get signed up for this one. You can get some five friends together and see where you can get. Maybe you can somehow qualify into the playoffs, which will be kicking off in the beginning of August. Sorry, I'm just having to list out the map pool for them. Just making sure they knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, they were like, they all thought it was best of one. They were like, yeah, see you, bye. And guys like, whoa, 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 hold on. Yeah. Oh, get back in there. <laughs> oh. They're asking for the coach to come in as well. I'm just waiting for the uh, map choice to come in. This is round one to eight, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so plenty plenty of games to go tonight. Uh, obviously, round 64. Luminosity going to be waiting for the winner of this. So at the moment, it's looking like it could be Elevate. Simple one to zero. But they've got another map to win yet. Just waiting for Zenith Black to make their choice. Um, Luminosity. Let's talk about them briefly, because obviously coming up yeah. next... Very strong team, have been putting in well, some pretty stalwart results and steadily increasing, actually. The most important thing is that they lost their support, their uh, Esper, their Mercy. Mm. They're actually running a new player, Indust, who was a, a top TF2 medic and definitely someone that they all knew. That's how the team kind of originally formed back in the day when they were known as Not Enigma, just uh, people who played mixes together um, back in TF2, and he's going to be joining them uh, for this one. Not sure if he's a permanent member just yet, but mm. he'll be trying his best, I guess, to join the team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're just waiting for... Zenith Black to confirm that map. They're yeah. deliberating over it. Uh, I guess when they thought it was only 1-0, to zero, they're like, that's it. Yep, we're done. Peace. Off to play some rounds. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slows down. Slow down a little bit. Hopefully they get themselves locked in there. But uh, next map would be Dorado for Luminosity versus uh, oh, the winner of this. They're going for mm -hmm. Gibraltar. They're going for the long one. Okay, longest map in the game. Excellent. Okay, we'll see how it works out for them, whether they can push on through get through that big nasty choke point we saw it yesterday uh, a couple of teams it was I think it was the Anox game no the Anox game I'm thinking when it was so close and Anox should have won it yeah, oh about, yeah, yeah about 10, 10 20 seconds left to close out the game and uh, to defend successfully and they didn't uh, they managed to sneak in at the end there that was against um, Fortress Anox no it wasn't wasn't Fortress it no, was that was against Overwatch Kings Overwatch Kings yeah. Watch games, that was yes. the final. That was like the the penultimate game of the day yesterday. But we're loading into Gibraltar finally here as our second game of Elevate versus Zenith Black. And again, the winner plays Luminosity next. We'll find out if it's going to be Elevate here mm. in two, or if we will potentially find out what the third map is going to be. Let's drop in a game and see how this one goes. So let's get underway. Oh, 
No, we were ready. Or go back to lobby. <laughs> ah! They they thought we weren't ready. We're always ready. In fact, we were all sat waiting, feeling for them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we're loading in. We'll yeah. drop back in. We're this going one. back in. Trying to catch us off guard. Trying to make you work harder, Jason. They're just testing your skills. I have to roll my chair. You have to subtly, subtly slink away and then slink back in. Ah, <sighs> okay. I already went to the gym today and exercise. I don't need to do it again today. Yeah. Okay, there were squats. Not today. It was no. bike. It was bike day. Bike day. Yeah. Is that, it's a little bit of a cardio day is today that, for me. Is that a subtle way of saying you did, um, uh, what's it called? Spin class. Actually, the women in spin class are ridiculous here in Germany. But no, I didn't do that, no. You didn't do spin I class. did that on a bike. Um, so here we go. Loaded in. Looks like Elevate going to be going for uh, basically a standard setup. However, they don't have a soldier, which is a little bit surprising to me. Or maybe even Double Reaper, mm -hmm. uh, the Baki. He was playing Roadhog before. I was expecting him to be playing uh, a soldier, long range soldier, if you hold back here on this point on uh, CP2, it's just insane because of the height difference that you have and the damage fall off you don't have, most importantly. And Zenith Black on the attack going to be running a soldier themselves with a Ferrum. On Axe going to be picking that one up. They don't have any Reapers, though. Which is a little bit worrisome for me. Reaper ridiculously strong at this moment. Well, Lavaki is playing his Reaper, as you mentioned. Very strong. You just sit around the corner. We saw how successful it was in the quarterfinals yesterday. Everybody had to play Gibraltar first map. Of course, we do have on the opposite side. Soldier 76 long paired with the Farrell. They can change out before we spawn, 12 seconds, but looking like they're going to be sticking with what they've already got. Again, as good a view as they can out the window to see if they can get a glimpse on what exactly is there in spawn. You can see Onyax is trying to do that. So I can't see anything, boys. I can't see it. I don't know what they've got. I don't know what they've got. We'll stick with what we've got. And they're going for it. Let's see how it works out for them. Borky, as you mentioned, they've actually gone for the high defense, which is not something a lot of teams do. They tend to sit around on the server side, just maybe get a little poke here and there, but then back away to the server room, which is, looks like they're going to do. I was actually curious if they're going to try to contest that first point after having a dominating performance on King's Row, but instead, like I said, backing away, going to the server room, waiting for the push to come in from the side. They're not running a fair themselves. I think Onyx is actually going to have a free reign, or should ideally have free reign here, as long as he doesn't get taken out of the sky uh, by the Borky. Or get hit by those right clicks out of Azaria. But here we go. Pushes in. Entire team trying to push this payload up. Looking a little bit better this time. Trying to focus mm. out on Iron Arm. Or sorry, onto uh, Winter. On the Mercy. Hits a direct rocket. Looking for the second. But Winter is still escaping him. No, right in front of him. We'll finally get the kill on him. Is it going to be enough? The rest of his team sadly were picked off. And that will be a reset. Iron Arm is going to back away. Doesn't want to get picked off. Needs to rejoin his team. It's interesting to see the defensive setup from these teams. Obviously, you think of Reunited. Obviously, that was the last game of the night yesterday. You think of... Uh, um, why can't I think of his name on Soldier 76? I think it reload. Valataja. Valataja. I just, I just remember him by his old name. Uh, Valataja up on the high ground. Valhalla. Permanently. <laughs> permanently Valhalla, which I called him yesterday. <laughs> Valhalla! Oh, Iron oh, Arm. Oh, dear me. That's pretty criminal. Caught away from his team. And that's that's easy stuff. Easy stuff for the Borky deck. Maybe we're seeing why he chose to go with this one. Even a Til Valhalla. Even a uh, straight up ultimate from the barrage is not gonna catch them out. Okay, change is coming in. Rubes decided to go over to Widowmaker. Not really gonna work out. He hasn't got free angle, that's the point. That's the reason you take the server room. You don't get free angles. You have to put yourself out there. So if he wants to look in the server room, he's got to go across the side there, and they're going to see him taking the shots. That's the point of the uh, position oh. they're using. Oh, he's got to hit those jumps, too. He needs to at least save yeah. his uh, grappling hook for a little bit longer. They're coming in through the right side. He sees a trigger come in. He knows he's going to have an opportunity, but he needs to hit the shots. They're lined up for him. They're not even shooting at him, most importantly, but he hasn't connected a shot just yet. Yeah, that's not ideal. Certainly didn't work out, but they did get the payload moving. It kind of distracted them around the side there. Oh, you're not going to jump down. That's never going to work out for you. High Noon getting popped out by the Borky. Gets himself a kill. But there's the res. Does finally come in. Iron Arm gets picked off for his troubles. You see the Earth Chatter coming around, but that payload's still yet to move. Rube trying to hold that high ground. But as you can see, those Zarya shots raining in him. He's going to have to show around. The second he peeks out, the Borky lands the headshot. The thing is, the longer he takes to die, the, the, the worse spawn he's going to have with his team. And now they actually get to teleport up there and get shielded up too, just to make sure to not be instantly killed. But now they have to wait. Like, they're down a man for another 10, 15 seconds. You only have three minutes left to work with in this one. Black, or Zena's Black need to pick up some pace here. 
But the ultimates they have online, there's definitely a good chance. If they can focus down Winter, they'll have a good start. See, now this is what we were talking about. This is why Valataja used to sit on the left-hand side, because the position Onyak is holding right now does give him free reign to just bob in, bob out, especially hit those rockets. Whereas if there was a soldier or anything on that left-hand side, that's got to be a misclick. That's a bad misclick It's mind that. games. He's that's like, I don't need Barrage <laughs> to kill you guys. <laughs> I'd like to think it's that, but that's pretty horrible to watch. But you know what? We all make these mistakes. We all click the keyboard at the wrong time and suddenly think, oh my god. Nobody, hope nobody saw that, boys. Hope nobody saw that, but sadly we did. Well, he's going to be coming in for the side. Has a chance to redeem himself. He's actually still alive, trying to apply some damage with those rockets, but he's going to be forced to back away again because they've lost out on people. Roop switch over to the Tracer it. from Widow. Yeah, they're going to chase him down. This is, this is exactly what you should be doing once you pick up a kill or two and you realize the other mid team's going to have to back away. Speed up, chase them down. Don't give them free, uh, oh, free ability to run away. The shield was dropped just that second. Came up, but he caught Roop behind it. So Roop made the switch. As you can see, was on Tracer. Still is sticking around it. They do have a lot of ulties, though. They're going to have one big push, one last big hoorah to try and get this payload into the hangar bay and they're gonna have to make sure they can pile up these ultis together let's have a spin across to fancy pants because he's the one pushing in sound barrier will trigger the go mechanism that's when they're gonna be trying to push on into the server room there's no graviton surge up uh, for Ele elevate currently so you might not even need to use it right away might want to wait to actually as they do fight him or even wait for a revive to come in for iron arm as another defensive ultimate. They have to be careful. They have to actually engage them now, Elevate. They can't let this payload continue to push through. The sound gets popped. Not necessarily 100% agree with this one. That's a Graviton Surge as well. Gonna catch that onto one. Uh, I guess it's gonna go down. But I don't think that's the end of them. I think Elevator's still gonna hold on because Winter has re uh, res. Yeah, there's the big Resurrect coming through. Is it gonna be enough? Onyx is gonna have his ulti available. Oh, he got took out just as it was up. And Gambit, the last man standing. Now, Ionar, where is he? He's miles away. He's only just respawned, so he didn't get to use it in time. And now, 43 seconds. They're going to get one last chance. But, I guess you say, a lot of those ultis we use, we're going to have Pulse Bomb available. Resurrect will be in there. And Onyx, because he got took out, will have that barrage to try and clear them out. No don't whip Resurrect for Winter, though. That's, that's vital. We'll see if it's back up in time before the fight. Okay, there's a Reaper right in front of him. So let's go for the early damage onto him, feeding Zarya a little bit of extra energy. But he still hasn't been able to pressure in just yet. Somehow, Lavix is just not being punished when he goes in towards that high ground. He's not being focused down. And there we go, Onyx. There's no real need to fight a Reap in this position. You probably should have went around, and you probably helped him kill your Mercy. Oh. Now, Iron Arm with the res is now dead. There's four seconds left, and Zenith Black are looking to fall. Yeah, I picked him off there. Gambit goes down. All blue on the kill screen, I'm afraid. That means Elevate will hold a second time. And pretty solid stuff. High Noon just going to get popped at the end for no reason whatsoever other than to zone them and just use up your ultis. So, good half from Elevate. Dominant stuff over Zenith Black here. They've got their own turn to attack, of course. They just need to get into the hangar bay, and it's GG. All right, so Zenith Black, they need to put up a defense. I think that's where you're seeing Fancy Patsu. Uh, Patsu switch over to the Symmetra. He realizes, well, we're going to need... The ability to get back extremely quickly. And she's going to facilitate that. But the problem is, will they run a triple support? Or will they just go for two and not have Lucio? Which is something they kind of uh, maybe needed before. But we'll see. We'll we see. will see. Okay. I mean, yeah, this is kind of what I expected. They're going possible double Winston on the attack this time around. With yeah, the Genji, it's all quickly. basically speed. Yeah, just pile in there, get in. And uh, get the next round underway. So Rube here, who's going to be playing the Widowmaker. Mm, ballsy. With no mercy, has no chance. No chance at all survive. Because yeah. you're going to see Val Virtues and the Baki jump on top of him. He's going to immediately be taken down. Uh, Gabbits can actually They're gonna try do a decent amount of work, but I just don't know. Against a Genji, who's really good against a, a Junkrat, and it's a fair in the sky, he's going to have no chance. As long as uh, Gessick doesn't die, like in the beginning, to a shot from Rube, then this should be, honestly, a quick take. They just and have an overall better comp. And as you mentioned, they didn't use a, a Lucia to get out there quick either. So, just going to be the four turrets, I think. Maybe get the fifth one down just towards the end. Oh, they did switch Iron Arm away from the Lucia. Like, it's like yeah, who sped him out, switched over the Mercy. Speed him out the D, okay. Um, but even, I don't think Iron Arm's going to survive if two Winstons are on top of him. Even if a Genji throws in there, which probably Lavic will do. 
Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is underway. I'm going to spin across the attackers. Let's see how it works out for them. The double Winston, the Genji, the Farah, Lucio. It's all built for speed, this team. They're just going to be piling on through. I expect Lavic to be going up on high, get himself the instant vision. Now, Onyak is in the right position. This is the perfect position for a Reaper on this map. Just drop down, pick them off as they come up on high. He's going to get himself a quick peek. That gives all the information he needs to his team so they know exactly what's coming their way. Actually, I don't agree with that peek, to be honest. No? To, to be fair to him, because you want to hide. You don't want them to know you're going to be there. And you can pick up a quick kill if they try to come in over that top side when there's no backup. Like, for against, if he walks in through here, boom, Reaper can kill him relatively quickly. But they're already fighting on top of the point. The payload's being left back, being pushed up by one person. Oh, yeah. And Lavic is just, he's just slicing dice and pick up kills left and right. Yeah, he's managed to deal with two, three. Mercy, not going to survive this, it doesn't seem. Still got that Winston chasing him. Uh, sorry, Reinhardt chasing him. He does get the res off. That's big for Iron Arm. He got taken down. Doesn't matter. Did his job, but is it going to be enough? You see Gambit gets him killed off in the end there. Wissix is still keeping that payload moving. So while the Assassins are in there, the Winstons were in there, they did keep the payload moving. And you can see the Golden Marker. That's all they need to get to to move on to the round of 64 against Luminosity. It is GG, and it was expected. A strong win from Elevate there. Solid defensive work, and they move through to the next round. Luminosity, though, will be a very, very different game. Yeah, it will be. But I think Elvig can at least do okay against them. I don't feel like it's going to be as one-sided as this match. But then again, like you said before, Luminosity has been performing extremely well lately. We'll see how Indus does, the, uh, Indus does though, as their new support. So, GG. Yeah. Quick one this time. We had an hour and a half yesterday. Yeah. It was a long, yeah. uh, all the draws in the world. And we, then we even went to, uh, obviously, Ilios, I think, at the end. Yeah, of the it's the to, tiebreaker King of the Hill game. It was a long it was one. Insane. So it's much <laughs> nicer to have a quick uh, seat this time around. So uh, yeah. let's get that game underway in a few moments, guys. We're going to go to a break, wait for them to set the lobby up, get themselves set up. It is going to be the round of 64. Plenty of action to go in the Atlantic Overwatch showdown tonight. Of course, $100,000 up for grabs. That's going to be in August the 20th and 21st, live at Gamescom. You're going to want to be there if you can. We're definitely going to be there. Hope to see you there. We'll be back after the break.